this video, I'm going to try to work out how to build a reading habit that I actually stick to. I'm probably going to nerd out a little bit about what happens in the brain when you read. And then I'm going to discuss three ways that I've been using to encourage myself to read more. Let's go. I love the rich. Oh, we goodness, Kellogg's mini wheats. But the delicious frosted side makes the rich kid in me open wide. The nutritious shredded wheat helps keep me on my toes. But the little ballerina in me thinks the taste steals the show. Kellogg's Mini Wheats. Wholesome shredded wheat for the adult in you. Great taste for the kid in you. So they're delicious and nutritious. The whole grain wheat really packs a crunch. But the delicious taste gives it just the right punch. <laughs> Table for two, please. Yes, you'd prefer something in our smoking area, Philippe. Fine. How'd you know she smoked? Teeth, Orlando. Tobacco stains give smokers away. Not when you brush every day with Topol. Topol smokers' tooth polish with fluoride safely removes newly deposited tobacco particles and helps clean away built-up stains. Table for two, please. I have a charming table in our non-smoking area. No, no, we smoke. But your teeth, so clean, and he smokes. Topol, the only toothpaste a smoker needs. Hi there, and welcome to Nostalgia Hit. In today's video, we look back at the cast of the 1990 Christmas blockbuster, Home Alone. We'll revisit the stars of the film, and update them as of 2021. So, grab your Home Alone then and now ticket. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and like and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the video. Macaulay Culkin played Kevin, a mischievous, quick-tempered boy who is mistakenly left at home. While his family head off to France on a Christmas vacation, McCulkin was undoubtedly one of the most successful child actors ever, winning several prestigious awards. During the 90s, he also starred in films such as My Girl, The Good Son, Getting Even With Dad, and Richie Rich. Recently, he has starred in the 10th season of American Horror Story Double Feature, to much critical acclaim, and is the publisher and CEO of the satirical pop culture website and podcast, Bunny Ears. McCulkin was born on August 26, 1980, and is now 41 years of age. Stand by for the most extraordinary chain of events ever swept up into high adventure. Hey, Larry, where's the forklift? Forklift! It's over there for the baggage water. Airplane. Airplane is drama. Uh, this is Dr. Brody at the Mayo Clinic. There's a passenger on your Chicago flight 209 or a little girl named Lisa Davis en route to Minneapolis. She's scheduled for a heart transplant. I want you to make sure that she's kept in a reclined position and that a continuous watch is kept on her IV. Airplane is action. Airplane is romance. I love you, Elaine. I love you. Airplane is music. There is only one river. There is only one sea. Airplane is... Never has the screen been so big. You ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir. I've never been up in a plane before. Peter Graves. You ever seen a grown man naked? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. My name is Roger Murdoch. I'm an airline pilot. Leslie Nielsen. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. Lloyd Bridges. Johnny, what can you make out of this? This? Well, I can make a cap. Or a brooch. Or pterodactyl. Could you um... Robert Stack. All right, Steve, let's face a few facts. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your flight. Julie Haggerty. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? Can you fly this plane and land it? Robert Hayes. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. Come down. Get a hold of yourself. Please, please, let me handle this. I gotta get out of here. Calm down. Now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this guy. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Don't be one of the 
everything's been torn to me. Sister, why not handle this? Mayday! Mayday! The most incredible adventure the screen has ever created. He's coming right at us! The big news is... Airplane. These are the top 10 things you should be buying at Dollar Tree this January 2022. And they're starting the year off strong with some top decor finds and amazing new items for around your home. In the first spot, $1 security cameras that are completely fake. But I decided to buy and try these just to see how realistic they look as a theft deterrent. Surprisingly enough, for a dollar, they actually come with a mounting kit. This does give you some peace of mind alongside a real anti-theft system, which I always advocate for. All right, so I'm having the first espresso of the day and I'm here at Vecherka in Brno where our friend Tommy who is a skilled barista and also co-owner of the place, we will explain, prepare and show you all the espresso drinks on the menu. So check it out. We'll break down all espresso drinks into two categories, black coffee and milk coffee. In black coffee, we'll talk about single espresso, double espresso, americano, lungo and filter coffee. In milk coffee, we'll talk about macchiato, cortado or piccolo, flat white, cappuccino and cafe latte. The names vary a lot around the world and recipes are not set in a stone, but this overview should be a good starting point for you. Top 10 Forgotten Department Stores here in United States for Halloween. America loves its restaurants and shops, but they are not always permanent. As times change, so do merchants around the world. Some are bought and some just disappear. Here are some of the chains that have come through the United States. Before we start the video, please subscribe to this channel and ring the bell icon so you never miss an update. 10. Bradley's The Bradley's Department Store, popularly known as Bradley's, was a department store located in Braintree, Massachusetts, operating mainly in the Northeastern United States. At its peak in 2000, Bradley's operated more than 105 stores in seven states across the Northeast with approximately 10,000 employees, as well as being part of Stop and Shop from 1961 to 1992. The series went on in Chapter 11 with a bang. In 2000, all its stores were closed on March 15, 2001. The Bradley's was renamed Bradley International Airport in Connecticut where the first meetings were held and maintained the store's founders. The first store opened in New London, Connecticut on March 14, 1958. The company was acquired by Stop and Shop in 1961, which ran the series until 1992. Mark it. Mark it again. I'm gonna mark the crap out of the scene. Mark it. Mark it. Mark it. Little... <laughs> it takes two to make a thing go right. It takes two to make an ass sign. Hey. Oh. Uh, I lost a piece of my manhood. There. Yeah, we cut. <laughs> oh, Kevin. Just be sure not to let him outside or the eagles. <laughs> It takes two to make a thing go right! Uh, uh. Oh! Oh my Whoa, god! Naked. Why are you oh my wet? God. Don't look at me! 
Oh God, you're showing everything. Cover that up. One, two, three, get loose now. <laughs> One more. Uh, get out of here. You're free. Shut up. <laughs> my nipple, she's got my nipple. Ah! Ow! The proposal in theaters June 19th. They were talking about how to become a full-time travel blogger. I've been working as a full-time travel blogger for the past three years. And over the past three years, I've made more than $200,000 getting paid to travel wherever I want. And over that time, I've also racked up over 800,000 followers on social media, 1.5 million views on YouTube. I'm gonna share with you my story of how I got here and all the tips and tricks that I've learned along my way that I can help pass on to you. So keep watching to learn how you can start your own travel blog and live your dreams. Hey guys, my name is Andrew Wise with Life Tailored, and we talk about everything that makes your life great. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and follow me on Instagram, at Life Tailored. So first I wanna start off talking about my story of how we got here, Way and myself. Seven years ago, we moved to New York City and we were flat broke. We barely had enough money for rent. And if you would've told me at that time that someday I'd become a full-time travel blogger, I would've thought you were definitely crazy. And looking back on that frigid day in February when we moved to New York, the last thing on my mind was being able to get paid to travel the world. But the thing is, that all changed about four years ago when I decided to devote myself to becoming a travel blogger and giving it a shot. I hope that you get inspired by this video and you make that change to change your life and live your dreams and follow what you want to do passionately and work your ass off or work your butt off. The reason I've been so successful is I never stopped grinding. I'll tell you that this video is gonna be better than yesterday's video, and the videos I create a year from now are gonna be better than this. Every day I'm learning something new, I'm honing my craft, and I'm getting better. I enjoy the learning process of all of this. I taught myself how to shoot video, how to shoot photos, how to build a website, how to edit photos, how to edit videos, and it's because I love learning. That's the main thing I wanna get across from you guys is, you need to love learning because this is going to be a hard job. It's going to be, there are going to be some highs, there are going to be some lows, but every day your goal is to get better. Most popular toys of the 1960s. The 1960s toy market continued to grow and is one of the golden eras for toys. There were more toys than ever before. Licensed toys from television shows became huge. Many of these toys lived on into the next decade and more. As Barbie was really beginning to take off, there was another doll that really gave her a run for the money. Her name was Chatty Cathy and she was a talking doll. She became the second highest doll of the decade. She would pull a string on her back and it would allow Cathy to speak one of her own 11 phrases. I love you, of course, was one of those. The doll even made an appearance on the Brady Bunch with Marsha Brady. Barbie made her debut in 1959 and really hit it big in the 1960s, but she went without a companion for two years before Ken arrived on the market in 1961. Initially, the doll had felt for real hair the first year. After the first year, it was replaced with a plastic do. Dolls were a hot commodity in the 1960s and they needed a place to live. 1962 introduced little girls to a cardboard ranch complete with mid-century modern furniture. Years later, Barbie would add levels and decadence to her home. Dolls got a little more masculine in 1964 with the introduction of G.I. Joe. A whole army of plastic soldiers just couldn't stand up to Hasbro's mighty hero. The Easy Bake Oven started teaching kids how to bake at a very young age in 1963. It utilized two light bulbs and came in two colors, yellow and light blue. Easy Bake wasn't the only popular small appliance in the 1960s. In 1966, Susie Homemaker was released and it was a line of shrunken appliances that made little girls forget about their Easy Bake ovens. Whammo produced many of the most memorable children's toys of the 1960s. 
The Super Mini Ball came out in 1965 and was one of the most popular. These super bouncy balls were supposed to bounce six times more and were supposed to be six times more fun. When Lightbright was launched in 1967, it was billed in catalogs as the amazing new toy that allows kids to color with light. It came with 16 pre-printed picture sheets to lay on an image box. There was nothing like the frustration of when you were working on a picture and you accidentally bumped your box and all the pegs fell out. Matchbox had been selling tiny cars for over a decade when Mattel jumped into the game with Hot Wheels in 1968. The initial line of cars included American Muscle like Camaro, Corvette, Firebird, Mustang, and more. Ideal Toy Company premiered these sort of two-dimensional dolls at the end of the decade. They came in three sizes and each with a theme. These groovy mod relics are quite collectible now. Rock'em Sock'em Robots is a two-player action toy and game. This toy was released in 1964 by the Marks Toy Company. It was designed by the renowned toy design firm Marvin Glass & Associates. The game featured two robots, Red Rocker and Blue Bomber. They were each manipulated by the players and the game was won when one player knocked the head off of the opposing robot. Etch-a-Sketch is a mechanical drawing toy manufactured by the Ohio Art Company starting in 1960. It had a thick gray screen and a red plastic frame with two white knobs. The knob on the left moved the internal style horizontally and the one on the right moved it vertically. It sold 600,000 units in less than five months. Operation is a game of physical skill that tests players hand-eye coordination and fine motor skills. This battery-operated game was invented in 1964 by John Spinelli. He sold his rights to the Marvin Glass for $500. The game was initially produced by Milton Bradley, but today is produced by Hasbro. The players are all dealt cards, and the object is to remove the humorously labeled body parts without making an error. One wrong move, and his nose will light up, and he'll start buzzing with pain. Twister is a game of physical skill that was first produced by Milton Bradley in 1966. It became a success after actress Eva Gabor played it with Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show on May 3, 1966. The competitors started a controversy aimed towards the game and Milton Bradley stating that they were selling sex in a box. The game is still being produced today by Hasbro who acquired Milton Bradley in 1985. Battleship is a strategic guessing game in which two players play. The winner is the one who has sunk all of the opposing players' ships. Originally, it was a pen and paper game that stemmed somewhere around after World War I. It was printed on paper by various companies in the 1930s and 1940s. In 1967, Milton Bradley introduced a version that used plastic boards and pegs. In later years, it was modernized with electronics, but the original version is still just as popular. Batman gets an honorable mention here. It was certainly not new, though. He first appeared in Detective Comics in 1939. But the Batman television series that aired in 1966 was extremely popular. Because of that, there were all sorts of merchandise and toys that were released, and they were highly desired. From Batmobiles to figures, and water guns to so much more, these were a big part of the 60s toys as well as decades to come, all from the television show. The 1960s produced some iconic toys that are still enjoyed by kids today as well as adults who had them as a child. Many of these toys are now collector's items worth tons of money. Thanks for watching this little episode on the most popular toys of the 1960s. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, stay tuned. Next, we'll be taking a look at the 1970s and the most popular toys from that decade. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. <music>